Well, I got my new thermostats in, but uh, I wanted to take a look at these old uh, Honeywell round thermostats that they replaced because um, they're really, really kind of interesting. Um, these were introduced in 1953. Uh, they've been around just forever. You can still buy them at Home Depot for $26, $27, the basic heat only model. This is, I think, a 27F. The original was the, the T, or uh, sorry, T. T87F, I think the original was the T87. So there have been slight changes in the technology and there are now uh, fancier ones that do heating and cooling and, and so on. But this is the basic heat only model that's probably very close to the original one that was introduced uh, visibly as well. Um, the, the design just really hasn't changed in uh, you know 60 years, more than 60 years. Uh, and I can't think of many pieces of, of uh, sort of home electronics, if you consider this that, uh, that have been around for you know, significant fractions of a century, both technically and visually unchanged. Um, so a really bit, really successful bit of technology, and also one that uh, you know, it's, it's iconic. This is the design that the Nest thermostat is basically kind of alluding to. This this classic round design. So I wanted to take a look at how it works. So uh, I'm going to diagram sort of a slightly simpler version, and then we'll look at how the uh, how this one works. So Imagine we have the two terminals here, they're the red and the white, and what we have across them is this component. Whoops, my pen is dying. All right, so we have this component. And all this is, let me draw the. Okay, Im imagine that this is all we have. This is the entire electrical circuit of the thermostat. Um, this component here uh, is uh, a mercury switch. And it's actually a really good, um, the, the schematic symbol for it is really good at explaining what it does because it's basically a glass capsule. The two leads poke into it and there's a ball of mercury here. And uh, more recently, this has been, you know, with environmental and health concerns about mercury, this has been replaced, I'm sure, with some other kind of liquid metal, but basically the same idea. Uh, and all that happens is when you tilt this this way, the ball of mercury runs down to this end and shorts out these two contacts, so the switch is closed. You rotate it the other way, the ball of mercury rolls away, opens the contacts, and the switch is off. So that's basically how it works. Um, so this is essentially an on or off, it's, it's an angle sensing device, but it's only on or off. It doesn't give you sort of proportional uh, feedback. It's just on or off based on the angle. So how do you convert a temperature, which is what we really want to measure, a temperature to an angle? Well, that uses another interesting bit of technology called a bimetallic strip. And uh, it's what it sounds like, bimetallic, two metals uh, in a strip, and they're sort of laminated together, uh, you know, welded or riveted or however it's done. Um, and as we know, materials expand and contract uh, as the temperature changes, but different materials do that at different rates. Uh, so they've chosen uh, two different metals with, with as different rates, you know, reasonably different rates. And what happens in is, is one expands faster than the other. Let's say this one expands faster than this one. In order to be longer than the other one, it has to curve things around. You know, it wants to be longer than the other one. So it, it causes a bend. And, and it's a very slight effect. So to really have a, a, good, a good range of that in a very, very, very long strip. Well, what they do instead is uh, um, they, create it, they, they wind this very, very long strip in a, uh, in a spiral like this, okay? And this end is fixed, and as it heats up, this part wants, the outside of this, of this spiral wants to get longer, so it, it kind of unwinds. And this end here, the very far end of it, will tilt away like this, and as it cools down, it'll tilt back like this. So you mount your mercury switch on here, and let's see which way you have to do it. If you do it, uh, as it winds up right. So you want your your control like this, I guess. So as it heats up, this tilts away, the mercury runs off of the contacts, and the, the heat shuts off. As it cools down, it, it winds back up. This tilts, the mercury hits this, turns the heat back on, and there you go. So that's sort of what's going on here. Uh, and I've got one of these already taken apart here. And you can actually see there's, there's two, uh, two bimetallic strips in this. Uh, there's one that's here, this is a springy looking thing, 
with a mercury switch on it. Actually, if you look at the mercury switch, let's see if I can get that where you can see it. You see the, the blob of metal in there? And it's a bit dull looking metal. I don't think it is real. You know, mercury would be shinier, I think. So it probably is some other replacement metal now. But you see it runs back and forth. So there's this bimetallic strip. And then there's a little teeny tiny one here uh, that's, that reads your current temperature. And actually, if I, uh, you see it says, you know, kind of 65-ish there. If I just breathe on this gently, All right, see it's gone up to almost 80. And then it's coming back down as it contracts. See that? See? So that's all that's happening. You can bring a temperature into an angle. Um, and then, uh, so, there will be some sort of balance point here where, you know, some specific temperature where it has kind of the balance where between on and off. Um, and there'll be a little bit of uh, hysteresis in here where, you know, the weight of this, of the, of the mercury ball, when it's this way, the weight of the, of the mercury will be holding it, kind of holding it uh, off a little bit longer. So it'll have to go extra far for it to, the ball to roll and turn it on and then when the ball is waiting it this way, it'll have to take a little, you know, have to heat up more for the ball to finally tilt. So, it, you know, it's not ex an exact temperature. It's sort of a, there's a, a, a lower temperature where it'll turn on and a higher temperature where it'll turn off. But there's sort of some kind of balanced temperature in the middle of that. So that would give you a fixed, uh, you know, a fixed uh, temperature thermostat. So to make it adjustable, all you sort of need to do is, is rotate this one way or another to bias it, right? Uh, and that's a temperature adjustment. Uh, you might think that that turn that you would just have this attached to this dial directly, and as you rotate the dial, it would rotate this mechanism. But actually, uh, if you look at here, as I rotate the dial clockwise, you see it's going the other direction. So what they've actually done is there's a gear here. So this is this is mounted on a uh, on a funny looking sort of gear like this. Uh, this is mounted here, and then the uh, there's a smaller gear here. That's that's turned by the dial, uh, and this just gives you a wider range. Rather than having like a really narrow, fiddly range, it gives you this nice. You know, it's about of a third of a, ro of a rotation of the dial from one end to the other, uh, and that translates to you know a much smaller rotation of the of this component. So that's kind of the, the basic theory of it. This design is actually a little bit more complicated because. Um, uh, the problem with this, if you just did it this way, it would work. But the trouble is there'd be so much overshoot on this. Uh, when you turn the heat on, it's going to take quite a long time for the heat to make its way through the house and finally heat up the, the coil to turn this off. And then there would still be you know, loads of, of hot water left in your radiators or whatever, and it would, it would overshoot by quite a bit. So they've, they've enhanced this with something called a heat anticipator. And so what this is, is... Um, Let's see, you've got your switch, and th these may be in a different order than I'm drawing it, but roughly the same idea. Uh, and then this comes through a, a variable resistor through a heating element, and I'm not sure how we draw the heating element, but, um, and that goes to your terminal here. So when this turns on, it also is, generating some heat here, and this is heating this up. So the idea is that um, it, it's causing this to um, heat up, anticipating the heat that's going to be coming from the furnace and turn itself off. And you see here, there's this little adjustment uh, thing here, and this is adjusting the, this is the, the rheostat or variable resistor that's here. Let me find a, uh, a light. Okay. I don't know if you can see in there. You see the green? That's, that's the, the uh, winding of the rheostat around and around. So, and then this, this copper thing here, I believe, is the heating element that's sitting on top of this, the, the, this coil uh, right here. Um, so that is um, heating this up in advance of the heat coming from the furnace and sort of, um, you know, 
the longer it runs, then the hotter it gets, but also it's sort of proportional to how long the furnace is running and so on. Um, and, and, and then this back and forth lets you adjust for the, uh, how much of that effect you want. You know, if you, if you really have it um, low resistance here, then there's going to be, uh, or, or as you adjust this, there's be more or less heat. Uh, so this would uh, kick out, you know, faster or slower. Um, and let's see. Right, so, and then you're supposed to adjust this based on a, a measurement of the current that your furnace is sending through it. You adjust this to, um, to kind of match that. And uh, you know, I don't know if you can see that there's a little label that says longer this way and so on. Um, but, so it, it's just slightly more complicated, this uh, sort of anticipation mechanism to make it um, anticipate and turn off, turn itself off at the time when, um, you know, the residual heat in the system will continue to heat up the house and it'll actually reach its desired temperature or keep it in that, that range. Um, and then if you were to, to, to crank this entirely too far the wrong way, this heat up really fast, then your furnace would, would uh, shut off too early. You know, this would heat off, um, heat up, shut off the furnace, the furnace before really, things had warmed up, and then this would cool down and it would have to take, take multiple steps to get up to the real temperature, or perhaps it wouldn't even get up there at all. Um, so that's the basic idea, and I thought I'd also show again, let's see, I've got a lighter here. Let's see if I can show the, uh, turn it all the way down. You can see the effect of heat on this bimetallic strip with it when I apply a lighter to this bigger one here. It's oh, going the wrong way here. See that rising up? So that's the theory of operation for this thing. Um, really ingenious electromechanical design, very, very simple, very uh, durable. These things will last, last and last and last. Um, I suppose eventually um, you may get arcing in here with a mercury switch that could over time, I mean, that, this would be the part I would expect would, would wear out. Uh, or if you were constantly adjusting the temperature, I suppose you might wear out the gears or who knows. But really there's just fundamentally not a lot to go wrong with this. So uh, I'm gonna keep, uh, at least one of these around as a, as a backup for the Ecobees, um, you know, they're uh, as nice as they are. They're, they're extremely complicated devices. They've got Wi-Fi and a microprocessor and a, and a display, and there's just so much more to go wrong. Uh, it would be good to have a backup. Uh, these, I mean, there's a chance if you had one of the originals from uh, 1953, there's a chance it still works. Um, I think there's almost no chance that my Ecobee will still be working 60 years from now. So. Uh, that's the uh, classic Honeywell round thermostat. Uh, wonderful, iconic design. Two other things I wanted to add, actually three. Uh, the first being, when you think of two other things to add to your video, it's nice, and then the furnace comes on, it's nice to be able to just turn it off from your phone. Uh, so that's an, a nice, unanticipated feature of the Ecobee, although then the uh, hot water was uh, on as well, so I still had to wait for it to shut off. But anyway, uh, so the two things were, uh, first of all, you may have noticed that uh, when I was showing this, there are actually three wires on the uh, on the mercury switch here. Uh, so that's, I've, I've drawn it here as a, uh, as a single pole, single throw switch, but actually it seems to be a, I'm not exactly sure what the, the proper symbol for this is, but um, hmm. I don't think that's right. Let me try this again. I'll try this here. I think it's it's, it's a single pole uh, double throw switch in actuality. So I think it's uh, something like this. With the uh, the idea being that this blob be the short side, these two or these two. So this is your common, and this and one of them would be your heat, and one of them would be your uh, your cool, basically. Um, and so it's only using um, these two. The uh, the third connection that would be, uh, you know, so it's using the ones that that close the close. The, excuse me, the contacts that close when it gets cold is what it's using. There's this other pair that are common, and the other one that close when it gets uh, when it's heated up enough. And the the, uh, the wire for that one just seems to go off to this here. Which matches up with, with this, where there's no uh, no contact or anything. So I think what they may be doing is they've just 
uh, they're able to use the same top unit with a different base that has a, a contact here for cooling and, and maybe the switches and, and so on. Um, so uh, essentially what I've drawn is, is correct uh, because they're not really using this uh, the, the third contact at all. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, I said in the uh, one of the Ecobee videos how nice it was that they gave you a little spirit level to help you uh, get it level on the wall, but that that was just for cosmetic purposes, which is nice. But um, but as you can imagine, with this arrangement, it's it's actually critical that you get it mounted uh, level. Otherwise, you are biasing your your temperature, uh, and the temperature you set isn't going to be accurate for what it actually uh, controls. So you you do need to get it really level. So. Um, and they don't give you a spirit level on this, of course. Anyway, uh, that's it. I'll see you next time.